Hello and welcome to the Dreaming of One Day podcast. A podcast designed to help you dream of the Western Cape, South Africa. Quite literally. What if you could start dreaming of your next holiday tonight? Think of it like taking the vacation of your dreams in your dreams. Research suggests that guided imagery can help relax the mind and assist with sleep. It also gives the subconscious mind specific imagery to continue to process, increasing the likelihood you'll dream about it once you drift off. So what if tonight you could dream of spotting whales off the coast of Hansby, a small coastal town a few hours outside of Cape Town, South Africa? For this episode, we'll be going on a marine wildlife tour around Dyer Island to spot playful penguins and dolphins, and of course, to visit the most breathtaking of all, the southern right whale. To begin, first make yourself comfortable. Lie down and relax on something comfortable where you'll be able to ease into sleep. Shuffle your feet and wriggle in. Don't be afraid to adjust and move about until you find the position that's just right. Let your heavy eyelids get heavier and fall closed. Let's begin. Every year on the southern tip of Africa, migrating whales come to mate and carve. A biologist would call it migration, officially. But perhaps there's a simpler explanation. Maybe they're just like us, willing to travel long distances in search of warmer waters, sunshine, and some time off in the Western Cape. Who can blame them? Why don't you join me as we welcome the arriving guests and take a boat out for a spot of whale watching. Around two and a half hours outside Cape Town, along the scenic coastal route, lies Klein Bay, a small bay that forms part of Khans Bay, one of a few seaside towns that dot the coastline. Klein means small in Afrikaans, so it feels right to begin in the small harbor in the bay called Small. Begin to smell the ocean air. It's salty and cool. The kind of air that you can feel and taste, making you aware of your lungs. Somehow each breath fresher than the last. You breathe in deeply, letting the air fill your lungs all the way to the base of your ribs. You can feel each breath as it flows in and out of your lungs. In and out. In and out. It's early, but you can already feel the sun on your face. Although it's warm, the breeze coming off the ocean is crisp and saves your cheeks from the sun's hotter rays. Looking across the harbor, it isn't really a harbor at all in the way you might imagine. It's much smaller for a start. A simple slipway runs into the water where the shark cage diving and whale watching vessels launch. To your right, the tidal pool and beach stretch out lazily. To your left, the small mountain stands proudly behind the few beach homes dotted along the otherwise flat shore. The harbor is pretty empty, except for a few small fishing boats that bob along the water. They somehow look exactly like you'd imagine. Simple hulls with sharp upward noses. 
The harbor is still calm this time of day. The early light hugs the bay in a hue of soft pink and baby blue, announcing the arrival of a new day. People nearby chat excitedly as we gather to get onto the boat. One of the women told you she's traveled halfway around the world just for this, to see the majestic whale. You climb aboard the aptly named Dreamcatcher, smile and think, well that's appropriate. It's the perfect vessel to find and watch whales. It has four viewing platforms, on the bottom and the top deck, and as well in the front and the back of the boat. You head up to the top deck and find a spot near the front. There's a brief safety presentation over the loudspeakers. The mention of life jackets makes you aware of your own, sitting low and tight around your waist, with big orange squares sheltering you from the wind. You stand and close your eyes to try and feel for your sea legs. Beneath your feet you can feel the ocean sway. It's so subtle you're not even sure if it's there, until there's a stronger push and you feel yourself finding your balance leaning one way and then the next. The engines begin with a hum, a tickle that runs from the motors along the boat, up your legs and through your spine. The boat surges forward. You can feel your center of gravity shift with the waves, making your stomach dip for a moment as it catches up. The rumble of the engine gets muffled by the wind as it rushes past, howling and gathering in pockets before pushing its way through you. The boat almost gallops as it gathers speed, the hull meeting every wave with a thud. You're glad the sea is forgiving today, though you imagine that the wilder ocean days hold their own magic and adventure. The boat moves along the shallows, not far behind the breakers. It's the best chance of seeing dolphins who come to play in the waters near Pearly Beach. You look back across the bay and notice the sand dunes, undulating like gold ripples, not unlike the waters they run alongside. Sometimes when the wind blows, it whips the sand into a haze and blurs the lines where the sand dune ends and the sky begins. You run your eyes along the dunes and spot a horse closer to the water. The rider must have taken advantage of the quiet beach and chooses to let the horse run in the length of the shore, unbothered by sunbathers or walkers on the beach. The boat slows to a stop and the excited hum of voices rise as everyone tries to see why. You scan the water, rising and falling like shards of cut glass. A continuous cycle of melting, reforming and shattering all at once. You spot his snout first. It breaks the surface of the water like a snorkel before the rest of his grey body glides the surface. It looks like a dolphin, except smaller, and under the dorsal fin sits a fleshy hump, earning the name the Humpback Dolphin. But this one also has another name. His name is Opa, apparently. It's not often you'll see a Humpback Dolphin, and a distinct grey patch on his back has made this one a bit of a local celebrity. He swims alongside the boat, diving in the wake before disappearing into the water. The boat is getting closer to Dyer Island. It's aiming for the channel of water alongside the island, the world-famous Shark Alley, where seals feast on fish and sharks feast on the seals. You nervously scan the water for any seals in danger, but you'll always smell a seal before you see it. 
They have the raw, wild scent all wild animals do. As the boat edges closer, your eyes don't know where to look. The island is coming alive. Every inch seems to breathe, flounder and flop. An endless sea of seals, thousands at least, languish on the shore, their bodies becoming living rocks that scratch and sniff every so often. The sound of hundreds of barks and grunts rushes along the surface of the water and arrives on the boat like an excited dog. Just off the shore, the surface of the water is a frenzy of activity, exploding and splashing as dozens of cormorants dive after their share of the hundreds of silverfish darting in the water below. A group of penguins sit on the rocks nearby, watching where the birds dive, calculating where their best bet for dinner is. But still, we haven't seen a whale. We try our luck and head the boat back to Burley Beach. You opt for a blanket since there's a chill in the air now. Sheltered from the wind, you're much warmer. A thin layer of sea salt covers the hair on your arms, making you aware of your skin. Looking back on the island, the sun leaves a shimmer on the water churned by the boat, leaving a path back to Dyer Island. Again, the boat slows. Something's been spotted. You scan the water for footprints. Large glossy circles left in the churning water when a whale dives, but it's hard to tell in all the rising and falling. The sun catches a spray of water, an exploding diamond that shimmers on the breeze for the briefest moment before vanishing into the air. But there it is again, another spray of water, this time splitting in two great puffs. Below the spray, a tiny island covered in barnacles rises on the surface for the briefest moment before hiding behind the rising and falling of the water. And it's gone again. The boat has stopped, but the engine emits a low hum, reminding the whales we're here. Your heart is beating in your chest. It's not fear exactly, though it's something quite like it. The thrill of being so close to a creature so large and powerful, reminds you how small you really are. Another spray erupts, and you're sure you could feel it on your face. It's unlikely since the boat is at a safe distance from the whales, so not to disturb them. But seeing them like this, feels like you could reach out and run your hands along the calloused skin. Every now and then, the air erupts with a blow or a slap as fins and tails fall and crash. Someone in the boat spots a calf in the water, who seems to be curious about our presence in the playground. The calf gets braver and braver, swimming inquisitively towards the boat, never directly, but staying in our orbit keeping an eye on us with every roll or dive. From the water, a deep bellow emits like a foghorn, Mum calling the calf home. The pair drift on while it's time for us to also head home. The boat turns and you can feel your body sway with the water. It seems you found your sea legs. You close your eyes and imagine the boat gone. Just you, balancing on the ocean blanket as it lifts and falls. Lifts and falls. The 
The sun is much warmer now, high in the sky. Like water poured from a height, it washes everything in a mellow glow. The air is warmer now too, changed by the sun into something kinder, softer as it brushes over your cheeks and through your hair. Perhaps this is where we leave you. Here, amongst the calming waves and the ocean's calls. And as you drift off now to sleep and dream, dream of the Western Cape until you are able to visit again. One day. <laughs>